Okay. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, the topic for today's webinar is stress analysis of surfa surfaces and members in ORFM 6 and R sub 9. My name is Caroline Lessmann and I'll be your moderator today. Um, I work here at Bluebird Software in the marketing department, so I'm responsible for the webinars and newsletters. And yeah, my two colleagues will present and answering your questions today. And yeah, well, they can introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Andreas Niemeyer. I'm presenting today's this webinar and um, I'm responsible by Blueball for the product uh, development. Here I lead together with Mr. Blueball all wished features and transform it to the programmers. So hello, my name is Stefan Hoffmann. I'm working in the customer support and I'm also responsible for the development of the dynamic analysis add-ons and I will be sitting in the chat and trying to answer your questions. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Now we can switch off our webcam so everybody can see the full screen. And then just for your information, um, we always encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. So here on the right side of your screen, you have the control panel where you can ask your questions here. And yeah, if by chance we can't um, answer all the questions throughout the presentation, you will certainly get an email afterwards. And the other way is to uh, uh, watch the entire webinar and send your question after at info at bluebolt.com. Okay, so that's from me now, firstly, and then I hand over to my colleague, Andreas Niemeyer. Uh, Andreas, you're muted. We can't hear you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Caroline. Okay, I start again. So thank you for overtaking. Um, I start with our topic today, uh, stress strain analysis in RFM 6 and r 9. Um, my task is, uh, or my aim is to show you what you can do with this program, what you can design and what the limits are. Um, for this, I have a short agenda, let's say which elements we can design, uh, what are the new elements you can design, and how you can document it. Of course, uh, in my style, I always want to present all these features in a short story, and therefore I prepared some elements, or let's say models. And uh, for this webinar, you will find it also on our website for this uh, webinar on the bottom. Here, my colleagues uh, already uploaded the models I want to present today. And we will start today with, a, let's say, a facade model from members. Um, here, we try to design, the, we, we model it, and we try to design the members by stresses. Then uh, we go over to, to, let's say, fix this facade on the concrete slabs by modeling such a console. Here we take care about design of surfaces and design of welt, welts between this angle and this uh, ear sheets. And um, at last but not least, we take a look on a solid model. Of course, I want to show how you can uh, let's say, design such solid models with um, the add-on, how you can detect stress ranges, and how you can do solid sections. 
And let's say this is for introduction, what we want to do in the next hour. And now I change directly to RFM. I prepared an open RFM here. Um, of course, we can start now modeling this facade by, by uh, giving this grid. But I think um, when you're starting modeling facades, you always will start with a drawing um, from the architect or whatever. And I prepared such a drawing in AutoCAD um, with two layers, one with axis, one with facade. And I overtaking this geometry directly from the opened AutoCAD sheet into RFM by using the input function. Here's this direct interface to AutoCAD. This is, I think, quite comfortable because you don't have to take care about geometry, then you can overtake it directly. The only question what the program wants to know is how you or how it should orientate it, because AutoCAD have a different coordinate system like RFM, but um, our developers implemented here a nice option to, to rotate or mirror it. And for this model, I would say the y-axis is C, and the C-axis we will mirror. And to, to be organized, we say, please overtake the layers from AutoCAD into visibilities what is similar in ours. And if we overtake it and confirm the dialogue, you will see the facade will appear in the background. And um, of course, like expected, we will get here in the visibilities, two user-defined uh, visibilities, one facade. So this means the outer layer and one axis layer. For our purpose today, we only need the axis layer, so the facade part we will delete. I select it and remove it. So now we know exactly how big the facade is, what are the dimensions, what is the grid spacing, and we can go ahead modeling this structure. And for this, of course, we take a closer look on this model and see, okay, the draw of this facade, draw did the lines from left to right and draw over this mid um, elements. This is not really suitable for often because you have to define here some contact definitions. So we repair it with this intersection function and create here single lines. In the next, uh, point um, we try to add members with suitable cross sections and for this I prepare uh, material and sections um, before. Therefore I open here this material table. You see the program already defined a steel with sections from the um, AutoCAD drawing but we don't need a steel, we need a aluminum here. Therefore, I delete this input and define here um, a new material um, by using this keyword search 6060 and select here, for example, this T6 aluminum from Eurocode solution and confirm it. The next uh, point, I go to the section register and define here the cross sections. These two drawing uh, philosophical sections I delete and define two new one, one for the columns and one for the horizontal elements. For the columns, I open the library and because it's an aluminum facade, I have rectangular hollow section and we prepared for this stuff, a special cross section, it's here because it's a rectangular hollow section where you can specify the thicknesses uh, individual, what allows you to simulate all these cases uh, simplified. And I define here as high 200 millimeters as with um, 60 millimeters for the thicknesses, um, three millimeters in both directions. And for the, let's say, short uh, thicknesses, I use here five millimeters. And because we have a similar cross section for the horizontal members, I select this 
already defined cross section, copy it and modify it so that it fits. So I change it here to 180. Okay, now we have prepared everything. We can assign it and we can start assigning. So I select here these vertical lines by pressing Control at the same time and go here into the properties of the line and select here the option member. This is the sign for um, RFM that it knows, okay, I have apply, I have to apply now a, a member with a specific type. We use here beam and this cross section, we use the first one. And after confirmation, the program is distributing this cross section to this line. The same we will do for the horizontal elements. So um, we select it, right click, edit, members, the same action like before. The only change is here that we use this second cross section. So far was everything easy. If we take now a closer look to this facade, um, we will see that uh, the program have here um, rotated the cross section in a wrong orientation. This comes from the basic definition, how the members are placed in space, but it's not a big deal because we can open here um, the section uh, list, can select both cross section and use here the section rotation and define here, for example, 90 degree. After confirmation, you will see the program is orientating the cross sections as expected. So far, um, we have defined now the grid of members and we can start uh, adding um, additional properties like, for example, hinges and bring in some organizational stuff. And for this organizational stuff, I would to say, um, for me, it's interesting now um, when I draw with my mouse cursor above these members, you will see um, it will be only selected these elements between these horizontal elements again and again. But in reality, these elements belongs together because it's manufactured from one beam. So for I select all these members and say um, in the properties or in the context menu, members, please be a member set. The program realizes four different settings and now we have defined it as member set. In the next fact, I want to introduce a, a new, or so let's say a, a, a special feature from RFM, um, what should help you for organization of structure and further also for design. And here, um, please open the base data and open the settings and options register. And you will find on the bottom here two options, member representatives and member set representatives. We will, let's say, activate both. And if we confirm it, you will see, you will get here such red bubbles above the members. And you will get here two arms uh, with a setting. And this means the program realized now we have here similar elements for this horizontal elements. And we have also similar elements for this vertical elements. And it could be much more. So this means the program realized now two unique positions from these 24 different members. And this is now easy because we can use these settings for, let's say, defining some stuff, for example, hinges. I can select all by using this option and say, yes, of course, we have a, a hinge on both sides. And later we can use this definition for reducing my documentation because I can uh, uh, document only these two elements because it uses the biggest forces of all available elements and outputs it in this definition. But I will show you when we have these results. Now 
um, the structure is so far ready to apply boundary conditions. Here I starting with uh, the load boundary conditions, what means um, we create the load case self weight and wind. For self weight, I open here the list. We can define here name, self weight. And then we take a look, of course, the self weight is activated here, but we have also to consider the weight of the class. And if you have to, come to model such a facade, you know the class is not inside the members, then it's in front of the members. Therefore, it bring in, bring or bring us a, a torsion bending moment on these horizontal elements. And how we can consider this? Um, we can consider it with a load. And to know where the eccentricity should run, um, we activate here a member axis system. This shows us, OK, for all elements, the c-axis show inside the monitor. So if we assume the class is in front, we have to define the eccentricity in minus c direction. Now um, let's apply the load of the class panels in front of the facade. And here we take a, a member load um, with a type uh, NX, where I can say, OK, here, let's define here 3.75 kilonewton, two pieces of it. And we place it here uh, in 10% of member length plus 80. And um, we define here a load eccentricity, which should run in C direction with minus 160. So now we can say, OK, this load should be applied on this member. And for the others, we do it similar. So if we closed um, the dialog, we can overtake the basic settings from with this overtaking function. And now let's write here 0 0.2 for the small panels. So um, let's select here these members, apply and next. And the last one is 1.7. And here are these three members. So this was a quite easy task to apply such uh, loads, such dual pitched loads. And um, now um, we we go over to the next load case. For me, it's important now to present the steel, the stress strain add-on to have some different load cases. So we need something. So in this case, it's a facade. We, we apply a wind load. Um, here, I use the category um, wind. OK, and let's apply the wind with a, a wizard. Um, here we offer a member load from area load wizard, um, where we can say the load could be, for example, 0 0.7 kilonewton per square meter. It should run in y direction, and uh, it should act on all of these cells where I draw a, a window above. And now, after confirmation, we see a symbol which symbolizes this load. And behind, if we display it separately, you see it will distribute it as expected to the members. But for a simplified display, we can use this picture here. Now, we are almost ready. The only point what is missing is the um, boundary condition for the support. And here we take a look. Maybe let's use here this global coordinate system. And for this, we support it in the middle. So here. And therefore, I select this member and divide it in the middle by one with one node. Of course, the member representative remains because it belongs to the member set. And now we can use these nodes and can apply here uh, nodal support, which is fixed in x, y, c, and the rotation about c. And so far, I can fix, uh, fix it on this lab here. And for the bottom, we take a similar 
boundary condition. The only thing what I do here, I release the C degree that I have a free movement in this direction and um, apply it to these nodes here. Now, my structure is almost ready. We have supports, we have floats, we have a structure from members, we have member representatives. And the question could arise how I can design it according stresses. To design it according stresses, we need um, a combination of loads. What means? Um, I want to combine it according to this rule, for example, according to Eurocode 0, I use a wizard for it. And the wizard, let's say, thinks we have to do a complete job, so it offers us ULS and SLS checks. For me or for my presentation today, only the ULS checks are important, therefore I remove it. And um, this means now with this setting that the program generates combinations according to this law here. You see also this box is empty here. There is a lot of free white space. The question why I will answer directly. Um, but if we go to load combinations, you will see the program creates us here this load combinations according to these defined loads. Um, but how I can say the program said it should do a stress check for six members. And for this, you have to open the base data and have to go to the add-on register and open here, or let's say activate here the stress strain analysis. For me, it's now good for the presentation that I activated afterwards, because when I activate it afterwards, we get here a new calculation task. We get here a new table. We get uh, stress strain analysis arm here in Navigator. But in this combination, if you go back to design situation, you will see suddenly we get here option stress strain. And this is governing or let's say a really important fact because now this design situation, DS1, including these combinations, knows it should run a stress strain analysis. Of course, I can deactivate, but it knows it should it do. And if we calculate all, the program um, runs all available load cases and combinations, and afterwards it runs a stress strain analysis. So static analysis is done, we get deflection and forces and so on. But now we get also here result stress strain. So this is, let's say, the game behind. You define in basic data the information what you want to calculate. And the design situation is, let's say, the basket of forces what will be moved into the stress strain analysis. And to understand it more in detail, we open now the table of stress strain, the input data. And here you see it's, it's matching. So in the first table, you will see DS1 is activated. In the second table is activated what should be analyzed. Here you see we have members, member sets, member representative, member set representatives. Everything is checked. This is standard setting. For you, it's important. You see the program will design everything what it will get in hand. So we have these objects here. These objects will be designed. In the next option, it will offer us to calculate not only stresses and also stress ranges. It's deactivated because it's not a standard what you have to do, but you can do. I will present this option with a solid example. And in the next table, because the stress check is not only calculating the existing stress and also the limit stress, and therefore it, it mentions here the material what is used for the cross sections. The same for cross sections. And now um, we coming to, a, let's say, a main table, See, let's say the brain behind, what decides what should be calculated in this stress check. At the moment, you see in the navigator, it calculates for members, for member representatives, member set representatives, sigma tot, tau tot, and sigma mises. 
but it could calculate much more if you want. So here, if you open this setting, it's something like calculation details for the stress strain check. And you see, oh, you get here a really long table of stress components, what you can calculate, normal stress component, compression stress component, tension, bending. And here the program activated Sigma Tort, Tau Tort and Mises. And on the second column, you can select what should be checked, limit equivalent stress, for example. But you could also use user-defined if you wish. And um, so far, if you define this, you see this is not only one setting, then you can have several. For example, we give here a name, Mises, and we use a second, for example, Dreska. And here for Dreska setting, we define here Dreska option. And now if we confirm this, program wants to delete results. And we can say now the Dreska option should use, for example, for these four members. What happens? The program says, okay, this member blah, 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 should be checked with Mises setting. This member should be checked with Dreska setting. An overview of all these you will get in the last tables, for example, members, you see member one is checked with this, member six with this. So you get an overview here in table, but of course you will get the result of all these settings here graphical also, because here in the results now, you get not sigma tot and tau tot, then sigma Mises and Dreska. Mises is defined for all, Dreska is defined only for these four members like we did it. And because this is only the existing stress, you can also visualize the diagrams on, visual, on utilization. So here you get the utilization visually visualized here as diagrams on members. Now, if you watch all these results, you will see we have stresses on members. This will be distributed in different, let's say, ways. For example, stresses by design situation, the stresses by loading. You see this load gives this result, this load gives this result, by material section, and so on. For example, by location on every X place. Yeah? Then you can go through every X place of stress. And if you say, oh, this stress is interesting, I want to know more in detail, you can open here um, the details and you will get an environment which shows you for these coordinates, the material properties, the section properties, the forces on this X place, and the stresses and the formula which leads to this utilization. If this is not enough and you say, I need it more in detail, you can open the, let's say, cross-section layout and get the utilization or stresses visualized over the discretization of cross-section. Here we have a stress layout. Here we have a utilization layout. And if you're interested in stresses itself, you get also stresses from normal force, stresses from bending moment, stresses from normal action. So all these things you can display if you need it, but in standard, you get everything visualized as these diagrams. And now you see, if you watch all these results, endless results, um, we know as engineers, the biggest one is interesting. You get it here. And if you need it for different positions, let's use these representatives because this representative says you, here this member, this is the biggest result for this horizontal element. And this is the biggest result for the vertical elements. And if you visualize it here, not by members and by representative, you get the biggest result overall visualized. So everyone has the same result because it's, unit or not unix and it's more it's representative of all these members so this brings me um, to the end of this example um, i want to show you here maybe to repeat how you can 
model a small member structure, of course, and how you can make a stress check for these members and representatives. And now we want to extend it, how you can use this add-on for a surface model. And we imagine we have to fix this facade here. Um, we read in static analysis that we get here, let's say forces, maybe 16.3 kilonewton downwards and 14.3 kilonewtons out of monitor. And we have to overtake these forces from this frameworks model to the concrete slab. And how we can do this? Um, here, I copy me such a member in Windows clipboard with Control C and open a new file. File is wrong word, uh, model. And we say here K5, for example and um, activate directly stress strain because it's our task today. And um, we confirm this and we get an open model. And now we set our focus in the middle and press Control U. The program asked me if he should give an offset for this model, I don't want, and get this member fragment here in my model. Um, if you, if we display this wireframe model, you see it's a member with a cross section. And if we select this member and go into the context menu, you see we get an option generate surfaces from member. This gives us now a discretization, a surface model discretization of this cross section. Here we have the surface thickness three, here the surface thickness five. But in fact, we need only the floor plan of this structure. So if we take a look here, maybe let's deactivate this table. We have now to fix this facade to the concrete slab and we have to model here a console what can overtake this. And this is my basic geometry what I should overtake. For this, I select this line here and say, Mm, I have to move it maybe in right uh, direction and uh, we copy it. Um, we use millimeters for better description and we move it in X direction. We know plus one and a half because it's a half of these three millimeters um, plus uh, the thickness of the console maybe five, uh, 10 millimeters and a half or five millimeters. And I can calculate directly such uh, inputs. And with confirmation, we get the line on the right side. The line for the left, we can copy by drag and drop. Now we know this, uh, let's say surface members here don't have to run completely to the outer edge of this uh, cross section. So I, uh, shorten it a little bit. In this case, I don't create the copy and I um, change it here with minus uh, 30 millimeters and confirm it. For the other side here on this place, I select these nodes and um, I have to maybe to extend it to, to connect to the concrete slab. So I um, use here also a modification in my direction with uh, minus um, what we need here, minus 2.5, minus 50, and minus 5 again. And then this uh, elements will be extended here. Now let's create the first metal uh, surfaces. Therefore, I select both lines and um, move it a little bit upward at first. Here is um, minus 50 millimeters. And now um, we draw from, from moving it down with a copy with 100 millimeter, a new surface by defining the vector and here by using step links, by saying, please create a surface in between and if I confirm it, I get here my surfaces from these elements. Now we can create, let's say, the first part of the angle, what connects to the concrete. Here I use a function create node between two elements. 
in for example here this and this and we create the standard node and uh, apply it now we can uh, copy it directly on the bottom and we move this 10 millimeters above so we say here uh, minus 10 okay and the same for this node here um, also 10 millimeters now we know the height of this uh, back uh, element we move these nodes now finally no. um, here in x direction for example 100 millimeter in x direction create a line in between and then we draw a new surface create copy with oh I made an error, I think, again. Uh, this is 10 millimeters I should remove. Okay, now we can make a line in between and draw a new surface by using the vector minus 200 millimeter, create copy using step links with a new surface and connecting it. Then we have almost all elements done. The only thing what is missing, maybe the upper part of the angle. And here we use uh, the copy command again. We zero this and in y direction we use minus 150 and creating a new surface. So far, this was the modeling of such an console. Pretty easy, I would say. At the moment, the surfaces are red because they don't know its thickness. We select now both and define these surfaces and define here for stiffness type standard and assign here a new thickness um, with 10 millimeter and we would like to have here a steel 235 from Eurocode, for example. Now, um, so far, this is assigned and the console appears in blue. And the next point, we should take care about boundary conditions, how it's fixed. We know um, this angle will be supported on concrete, therefore I um, define for the surfaces or display the coordinate system. I see it's showing uh, in direction to concrete, I select both surfaces and define here edit um, a support and I select here support condition. I don't check it because I think it's unrealistic. I define here a pretty stiff spring and say it should act only in direction to concrete, in negative direction, it should fail. And we have here these springs. In next uh, situation, I have to take care about because it's not supported, but it can removed. So I have to fix it against tension. So we have to use anchors here. So I use this corner node, create here a copy with minus 50 and in y direction with 50. And let's create a node. We get it here. And the same for this node where we only change this as minus and get here the place where the anchor should be placed. The anchor have a diameter of 10 millimeters. So let's uh, define here a hole. Um, we pick this and define here a radius of six millimeters, for example, the same for this. And we know now this node will be supported we have to transport the forces from this element to this node and for this i use a so-called coupling element i use here a surface condition with stiffness type membrane without tension so it can only transport compression force in membrane direction and for this we create a new thickness um, with 10 millimeter and a new material again from steel to S235. Um, okay. 
Okay. And now we place this surface inside this hole. Now we can place a nodal support here. Um, we define here an, uh, let's say, nodal support without rotation fixation and place it on this situation. And now we do a, a second. Um, the only difference will be that we release it in X that we get no, um, how to say, um, uh, strain or uh, uh, unstatic or unrealistic stress in between. So now um, we have modeled this situation. In the next instance, we have to model um, the place or how to say the, the load introduction. So it will be introduced in the center of gravity of this uh, floor plan of this uh, uh, column from what we uh, copied in initially. And for this, we I create only a short member here. To know the intersection points, I draw a window above this line and you see it will cut it directly uh, with the cross section, the remaining elements I can remove. And now I select these lines and give these lines here a member stiffness. I say it's a member. And because it should only transport forces, I use here a rigid member. And now I can place my load on the middle point and this rigid member will transport it to this surface model. The only thing what is missing is that I have to introduce it here to this surface model. Therefore, again, I model here a, a hole with diameter of um, 20. So I define a radius of 10, the same on this side. Okay. And let's introduce again here this membrane without tension with this thickness number four and place it here oops, inside this hole. Now the model is almost ready. We should define only now these forces from the facade. And if we remember right, we have 16.3 kilometers down. I use this component solution, so 16.3, and in y direction we have, I think, 14.3. Now we place it here, and you see the game. We place it here. The load will travel into these sheets and will be moved to this surface support and nodal supports. To get good results, we should mesh it fine. So we go to our mesh settings and define here, for example, a mesh of 10 millimeters. If you see this mesh, it looks globally nice, but I expect that we get here some singularities. So I refine the mesh on these nodes here, right click, edit and we say we have here a mesh refinement where we say um, please place something like a globe or sphere around which where the mesh will be reduced to this size and um, the same is on this connection lines because here we also some play some music <laughs> i would say um, where we say we need here a refinement so Let's take a mesh refinement, define here condition, maybe target length is five millimeters. And now if we mesh this model, you will get something what is expected. It will be refined here, it will be refined here. So far it looks nice. And if you don't want to see the symbols, you can remove type for nodes, for example, and also type for lines so far. Now we can, uh, let's say, start calculation. Um, but um, the only thing what is missing, we have to, to learn the programs that this load, this 16.3 and 14.3 kilonewtons are already contains gamma factors. For this, we should remove this result. 
uh, we should say this load case is fine. And here we will only take a look on this ULS setting. Service uh, stress strain is activated. And this should be done for a load combination with DS1. And here we say, please consider this load case. Of course, it could be done linear. And if we calculate all, we get uh, the static analysis with, uh, mentioned with SA and uh, the stress analysis. From, uh, let's say, plausibility control of static analysis, the deflection goes downwards with 0.3 millimeters. It's fine. And the support forces, maybe contact forces, is also fine. It will be pressed against concrete and supported here. So far, I would say model is reacts as expected. And from stress strain analysis, you will get here similar to the member model of selection of stresses, maybe Mises stress but, uh, for stresses. Um, maybe take your stresses on surfaces, say existing one, and uh, utilization against C limit stress, where you get the utilization. Now, what is a little bit disturbing is when you read this utilization, or let's say the stresses, you see you are almost by 600 millimeter, 600 Newton per square millimeter, what is pretty high. Um, if you want to search where is this peak, you can define here a limit with 235, what creates you a special panel, what running to red until 235, and the peak over is only this dark red, and you see how it's only this singularity here and here. So I think you can optimize by displaying only these elements what should be designed, so surfaces, stiffness type, standard, and you see, okay, now we have not 600 and 430, and um, the peak is here. Um, how we can remove it? Of course, it's, uh, let's say, a singularity, but um, in this case, for example, you can use a nonlinear material to, to, to use a yielding effect. For this, um, we are activating uh, um, here uh, nonlinear material behavior um, and activating it for this material here um, nonlinear elastic surface solids. And if we rerun now the analysis, you will get, um, let's say, for the stress, for the existing stress. Uh, something to the yield stress, what means we have now here a yield stress as 235. So far, results okay. Um, but the question is, do we have a yielding effect? And we have to check it. And this is now also the cause why the add-on is called stress strain. You can calculate with the add-on also strains means you can activate it in the global settings. And if you go to the surface configuration, similar to the members with this table, you can say, please calculate only sigma equivalent Mises. And for the strains, please calculate um, epsilon Mises and compare it if there is a plastic strain with 50 promil, for example. And now, if we calculate this add-on again, we get not only stresses and utilizations, stresses and utilizations, and also strains. And you see, okay, your strain is here by 1.9. So far, everything fine. And um, you can check it here. No? So now we come to the point that the surface is fine, we have to take care about next topic, what means welds. If you have to weld these elements to the angle, we offer in RFM6 a new solution. It's hidden here in uh, the types for lines. You can place here line welded joints. 
it's a typical post-processing effect, what means you can define how the weld is looking like, if it's a butt, jo a butt joint, corner joint, lap joint, T joint. You can say, okay, the shape is a single bevel, double bevel, single J, or a double fillet. You can specify the size and you can place it here in between where you say this line, this element should be connected to this element. The same for this element connected to this element. And similar to members and surfaces, you have a stress strain analysis where you can specify which element should be uh, uh, calculated. The program offers you, or it calculates, it transforms the stresses on the edge of the surface to a normal load, bending load, shear a long line and shear perpendicular to line, where you can say, please use a smoothing or no smoothing, and do you want to use a simplified or directional system? And here, if you calculate the simplified system, you get a normal stress, a bending stress, a shear stress, and a, let's say a shear along a weld line, and finally here a interaction of everything where you can say, please check this value against um, allowed limit uh, weld stress, for example, here 208. It's calculated according to the formulas from Eurocode, but you can use it for all other standards, except for we did it open. <laughs> and <clears throat> when you calculate this program, it deletes results from stress strain. And after recalculation, you get here um, a result for surfaces we deactivate and the result for the line welds. You see here normal stress, bending stress in x direction, surface uh, stress in x direction, uh, shear in vertical direction, and the interaction plus a utilization. And where you see, okay, um, here we have a small pick what is overutilized. If you see these diagrams, you ask, um, okay, it's nonlinear, clear, but uh, if you do a hand check, uh, it's, I, I distribute it over the complete length. Um, I know, therefore, um, we uh, defined here in the line welded configurations, or we give you the option here in special options register um, to say, okay, Please uh, smooth uh, the normal load linear, um, the bending load constant, and the shear loads also constant. And if you check this and recalculate uh, the stress strain result, you will get now, uh, let's say, a, <laughs> uh, a suitable uh, result because um, the shear load is now constant. Oops and the, let's say, normal load will be distributed linear, and this results to a better utilization, and you can do the check. But it depends really on which stresses you use, if you use a smoothed or not smoothed. So, now we come to the next chapter here, maybe to repeat, we designed surface, and line welds with stress strain. And now one object is remaining, a solid element. And for this solid element, um, I prepared a model because I have not so much time today. Um, I prepared here a small knuckle. Um, where it is, desktop, um, knuckle for webinar. <laughs> No. Again, open. Stress train. Let's open it. 
and um, here you will see uh, a solid model maybe you go overview remove mesh remove load um, it's made from surfaces with sickness zero and i filled in a solid uh, condition um, the model will be supported here with a surface support in this hole and in this top and bottom surface and it will get the load maybe downwards and upwards to create different stress situations in this model if you calculate um, or display make a plausibility check of this model you will see um, the deflection is going downwards what is clear now and uh, for checking loading sub uh, boundary con uh, conditions you will see you get the restrainment for the top surfaces pressure here pressure here and in the inside in the bearing you get also pressure vice versa transporting a bending moment so far it's reacting fine and it will give you let's say stresses in x in y and c directions um, you get extreme stresses um, what is interesting for design and um, you get also here strains so it's different to maybe members you get directly here internal forces this uh, like stresses what is let's say logical for um, solid elements and uh, the program will display you these forces or let's say stresses on the boundary surfaces if you want to look inside you can create the result section and can define a cutting plane in structure for example we cut here in x direction then you create here a view inside the model um, but all this let's say output gives you only the result of this selected load situation if you have more and you have to do a design the question appears how i can do a design and this is the task of stress strain because the stress strain add-on um, gives you the option to check uh, amount of or a series of load situations and gives you the biggest stresses from it so if we have for example here now these two load cases in design situation one what is let's say activated for stress strain and um, you calculate stress strain um, you get uh, overall um, feedback for these two load cases let's activate it and calculate the stress strain analysis and you will see you get here tables stresses on solids if you take a look on the input table now um, what i jumped over just um, we get here now the, the the program will grab solids it will activate it surfaces will be deactivated because they have no stiffness here um, it will offer you also stress ranges and finally also it will give you this solid configurations similar like we know it for member surfaces and line welds here you can say please calculate me only this Mrs. part and if you have your special cast material you can also define check it against any user defined uh, stress similar like for the line welds and if you have also the task to calculate uh, fatigue um, you can activate here the stress ranges for solids and if we recalculate it um, you will get now um, three results for the solids you will get uh, stresses you see here stress ratios and stress ranges if we take a look on the stresses you will see now we have an extreme here and the extreme here what is coming because the program considers co1 and co2 at the same time and gives you the biggest forces of both that's the difference if you watch only the results of co1 or co2 then here we have 246 you get the stress ratio check where you see okay 
The extremes are under the allowed limit stress. The existing stress compared to limit gives a utilization. And if you need, like mentioned, ranges, so um, please give, compare minimum to maximum stress, um, you can activate it. And I did it now for solid, but you can do it also for members and surfaces and line welds. The program searches from the considered selection. Here we have only CO1 and CO2, the smallest and biggest stress on the same place and gives you a range in between. And this will be output as colored skin above the model. And um, this brings me now to the end of point three I want to present today, um, where I want to repeat what's important here is um, you should see that stress strain analysis can calculate also or can design also solids with ranges. So now to sum up, um, stress strain is here to Consider a basket of forces, for example, a DS or more DS for uh, members, for member sets, for member representatives, for member set representatives, for surfaces, for line welds, for solids. And it can check the stress, the stress ratio and stress ranges and for a specific part also strains. And if you want to document all such things, we can use here, for example, our second model, our uh, surface model here, um, maybe make, if you, if, if you remove types for surfaces, then it looks more suitable. And um, if you say, okay, how we can document all this stress strain stuff, we create a report. Um, printout report, new report, give here a name, for example, stress check, and define what should be documented. In our case, let's start from scratch. So let's say we want to document from basic, uh, from types for lines, the line welds. And in this model, we have line welds and surfaces. So the stress analysis, the global settings, the objects to design for stresses, the design situation, materials, thicknesses, surface conditions, and line welds. And from results, we check here, stresses by surface and stresses by line on welds. And then you can create this document with all this information. Um, the program will give you a document, let's say a styled document with a header, uh, with a content, um, with all tables, what we just checked. So line weld joints, double fillet, continuous for millimeters, the global settings for the stress analysis, which objects, which forces, which materials, thicknesses, and the results is, uh, let's say, uh, check or uh, marked with red if it's not fine. And if you say, okay, I have to extend it with pictures to get a nice document, no problem. Um, you can say, okay, let's open the stress strain analysis and make a picture from the utilization of surface. And if you say, mm, it's really blue and I don't see the focus, then you can say, yeah, um, let's visualize only the surfaces what should be designed and use here these so-called gray zones below the isobands. And this is a special feature which should help you to hide uninteresting parts. You can say here, please hide the one promil of uninteresting part or maybe five promil or maybe 10%. Then you see, okay, he hide it now 10% of the uninteresting stress, what is not so so close to the limit, and the rest will be 
visualized and then you can make a nice picture uh, without playing with the colored panel and see directly where where it's interesting and you see okay interesting is here the load introduction here's the load introduction in the load overtake from this to this element and now let's find a good placement in space and print the picture to report um, where we say make window filling and um, this 3D option, for example. And now we move this picture into the report. And the same we are doing for line welds. So remove this, activate everything and print Again, a picture with these diagrams of this utilization and save and show and get these two pictures in printout report. Now we have these two pictures here in printout report, um, utilization of surfaces, utilization of line belts. And if you uh, move this into a PDF, maybe on desktop, web, store, yes, then you get a document in uh, Adobe Reader. Of course, this we already saw content, these tables, but on the end we have these pictures. And as you see here, if your client will read and will look behind this structure, he can rotate it and can look below. No? So no problem. The same also for these line welds. Um, he get much more information on a sheet of paper um, what you can purchase to him. Yeah? And this brings me to the end of my presentation and I give back to Caroline. Okay, thank you Andreas for your presentation. Um, now I briefly show you our website. Um, yeah, so here on our website, you can um, find the free full trial version if you don't have it yet um, for RFM6 and RSTOP9, as well as R section and RVIN2. And RFM6 and for RSTOP9, the full trial version includes all the add ons for the full 90 days. And then under news and events, webinars, you find the upcoming webinars and the past webinars as well as the one um, which was presented today let's see where it is um, here where i upload um, the recorded webinar the next days and when you scroll a bit under here you also can download the presentation slides as well as the models which we use today in the webinar and yeah that's um, it from today's webinar and if you now leave the webinar um, there will be a, a survey so it would be nice if you take the time to answer the questions it won't take long it's quite important for our quality management and yeah the um, worst score is one and the best score is five and yeah so thank you for your attention thanks to my colleagues for present present presenting and uh, answering the questions and yeah have a nice day and hopefully we'll see you next time